Hello, this is Mark from tradeinform.com and welcome to this video on how to monitor a relative strength trading strategy using Google Sheets. In this video, I will demonstrate how you can set up a highly customizable relative strength dashboard that you can use to monitor relative strength. You can use it to signal trade entries and exits using live price data taken directly from Google Finance. Before I get into the video, I would like to remind you of a few things. There is more information below this video in the notes, so please check them out. If you'd like to see more videos like this about trading using Google Sheets and backtesting your trading strategies using Excel, then please hit the subscribe button to see more videos. And finally, please use the comment section below to tell me what you think of this video. And also let me know what videos you would like to see next. So I have a blank Google Sheets document open on the screen at the moment and I'm going to show you how we can quite quickly set up a portfolio. Now I mentioned in the introduction that we're using ETFs. ETFs are a great way to trade all sorts of different markets, all sorts of different sectors, different parts of the world and they are a great way also to monitor relative strength to see what is doing well and what is doing not so well. So I'm going to get a few codes here of some of the more popular ETFs. Got the Got the top, start at the top here, got the S&P 500, large cap US stocks, got the emerging markets here, very popular sector of course, Triple Q which is the Tech 100, NASDAQ 100 tracker. We've got gold miners, a lot of people always want to have exposure to gold. FXI which is China large cap. EFA, which is non-US large stocks. We've got the Russell 2000 US small caps. XOP, which is oil and gas exploration. And we've got the Barclays high yield bonds here, which has got the rather catchy code of JNK quite like that and we have here health now we have here IWR IYR which is US real estate I've set up 10 different ETFs representing different sectors different parts of the markets and you can choose obviously as many as you like so the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get the price data and we can do this very handily, very easily. And it's the whole reason why we use Google Sheets using a formula called equals Google Finance. And if you just start typing it in, it will come up as a suggestion. And I'm just going to point it to the code. I can put in a dollar symbol there to fix the column. I'm going to close the bracket. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set up today's date minus one because markets in the US are not actually open at this moment. And I'm going to set up this formula price is the information that we want. And we're going to ask it for the price on this specific day. And I want to fix the row. So I use the dollar symbol again. And Google is going to bring me up these four cells of data, date close, the most recent price, which is yesterday's closing price, and the information that we really want, which is here, which is the closing price. When the markets are open, of course, this will represent the current price.
just press control V copy this down to the cells below and now we have the closing price on this particular day I'm going to measure relative strength using a short and a medium term time period obviously you would adjust this as you see fit so I'm taking it back 30 days and 90 days so now I've already got these in the right area so we always want to make everything as quick as possible so I can just press control and copy and we have the price data for each of these dates I'm just going to move these over one cell using cut and paste and I'll show you why in a minute. Now we've got the data that we want in this table but it's not very user friendly so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start making it so that we can quickly get the data that we want. So first of all I need all the rows of each of our markets, our ETFs. And copy this over here. Copy it over one more column. And there we have the price data. I'm going to get rid of what I don't need. And I'm going to keep the names. So there we have it. Rather more easy to use version of the prices. Let's get the date. So we know what we're dealing with. Okay, so this is useful in terms of price data but what I want is relative strength and I'm going to measure relative strength using a percentage so let's do another version of this table and each time we do it we'll see why we've put everything in order it becomes a lot easier so we can just now copy this across I want to keep the codes but here I'm going to use a formula and this formula is going to show me the percentage gain first of all over 30 days uh, I'll express that as a percentage and if I fix this once again I'll be able to copy this to here and now we've got our percentage gain over 90 days Again, because I've got all the data where I want it to be, I can drag this down like this. Everything we're doing here is trying to save time. And I'm going to just do a simple average of these two. Obviously, we can weight this. We can do all sorts of things with this. But for this demonstration, I'm just going to use a simple average of these two time periods. So we have got a value here of our relative strength. I'm going to use this tab here as my data tab and I'm going to create another clean one here. It's just a, created a new tab and you can already see the advantage of doing it this way because we now have I'm just going to call this recent strength and I'm going to call this, what do I say, medium term strength. You can add in long term strength and I'm just going to call this strength. So what we could we do now? What we could do is put this into a yet another table, again, just with the purposes of making it useful for us. The whole thing of having a dashboard is you want to see instantly what's going on. So let's put this in a new order. The first thing actually I'm going to do is I'm going to rank these. So let's put the formula in here. So I'm going to do equals rank. 
this cell here. I'm going to see how it ranks compared to all the other values. Press F4 this time to fix the each of these values in this row. And we can see now we have a ranking of 1 to 10. So we use Google Sheets to create a list of 1 to 10. And we can use one of the very my very favorite Excel and Google Sheets functions, which is first of all starts with index. So we put equals index and we tell it what it, what we want it to return. And we've got a range here, which is the range of codes. I'm going to put a comma in here. Now we're going to use match which is another formula and it works very nicely with index and we're going to match this number here. Once again we're going to use a dollar here to fix the column and we're going to tell it where we want it to match it from. Again press F4, put a comma in, press 0 because we want an exact match. Close the, close the brackets. Okay, so we have our codes there. Now looking at that, I like to have the codes, but I also like to have the the names, the quick names. So well, what I can do is just copy this formula here. And instead of taking the data from here, I want to take it from here. And all I need to do is alter my formula, changing the D to a C. And it is giving me a value here. Okay, so the next thing that I want to do is I'm going to copy this one top cell over again. The next thing I want is just to have a reminder of the strength. So now I want to take the values out of column G do that. So we have another table and again each time we're making the data more usable and we might want to use formatting tools to draw our eyes to the information that we want so we could use a color scale. We can use something like this and we could also use it here. Put a color scale in. So we've got it in both places. We can see quickly what's going on here. What else could we do? Um, we want to make the data as visual as possible. We want to see instantly what is going on so we can see oil and gas exploration. It's doing very nicely. Russell, very nicely as well. Emerging markets, junk bonds, and non-US large stocks are doing less well. Gold, US large stocks and stocks and China are doing okay. So why don't we put in a chart? Customize this. Uh, let's customize the title and we can say it's our relative strength portfolio and close that down. So there we have in a matter of minutes we've got a dashboard that is monitoring our relative strength portfolio. Uh, it's very easy to set this up and it really is, it's the way I monitor all my trading strategies using Google Sheets and it really is a good way to do it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Please remember that this is part of a series on trading using Google Sheets. So check out the other videos in this series. Remember to subscribe to see more videos like this. Please hit the like button and if you would like more information about trading the financial markets, backtesting and all sorts of technical trading, 
please go to www.tradeinformed.com.